everyone. Welcome to August Meet and Eat with Tracy, Martha, Dee Dee, and myself, Leah. Um, good afternoon, good evening, happy hour to those of us on the East Coast and sort of midday to early afternoon uh, through the West. We hope everyone is staying safe and well. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Hi, how are you all doing? So, Dee Dee, I know you have kind of, you're, you're, we can tell you're in a hotel room, so tell us what's going on. <laughs> so I am in Lander, Wyoming, um, really close to St. Canyon, and visiting my girlfriend, who I haven't seen for about two and a half years, Barb? Three. Three years. I haven't seen her for three years, and she only lives like six, seven hours away. Um, but we both were going stir crazy at home and decided to meet kind of in the middle and go hiking for a couple days and just get out on the fresh air, which is really smoky because of all the <laughs> fires. But it's, it's away from home and away from kids and away from obligations. So it's just, I'm really excited. And we both brought lots of food because we both are foodie people. And I have brought um, a salad to assemble for everybody today. Great. That's cool. Tracy, what are you up to? Um, actually, it's rainy today and I can't wake up, but I was doing some uh, digging in the dirt earlier today since the North Carolina mud is horrible to normally plant things. So I got out there and got all gross and disgusting, but it was worth it. <laughs> what did you plant? Um, gosh, I don't know the names. Of the, I have monkey grass. I have um, some daylilies. I have a couple other things that I just have to get in the ground. I'm trying to fill in for next year. Dave, I love to. Martha, what's up in, oh my gosh, now I'm forgetting, where, not Florida, where are you? No, Kentucky. Kentucky, that's it, somewhere down Kentucky, here. Kentucky, yeah, uh, not much, just working like normal, you know, all that good stuff, so being at the hospital at 3.30 in the morning, so, you know, that's still doing that run. Oh, are you cooking anything good for us today? Yes, I'm going to be cooking, um, it's a recipe from the allergy table, um, She's a, a blogger in the, um, actually in Ireland, so that's kind of cool. And um, it's like a no-bake, gluten-free, millionaire shortbread, so it'll be interesting. Interesting. Yeah, and I'm having to substitute the chocolate with a white chocolate on the top, so. Ooh. Awesome. Well, we just finished our first week of virtual third and fifth grade with results. Um, one kid melted down every day. One kid was like, oh, I'm done with my work. Can I go play? Um, so I told them I would make my infamous um, donut cake. So this is just a allergy-free, free of the top eight um, chocolate cake. And so I would make it in a bunt cake. And then you just throw on allergy-free sprinkles. Um, I was telling everyone earlier that I made this last night, fell asleep, it cooked for six hours. Um, which is not recommended. So <laughs> again, a few minutes ago, or over the last hour, and like I said, you just put this on. And the way I get the frosting like this is I melt it in the microwave. It's um, Enjoy Life chocolate chips, um, and some coconut milk from the can, and sugar, and melt it up, and you pour it over. Nice. Yeah. So they will be there at the pool at the moment if you can hear them in the background. So that. Uh, we we're going to talk about today our number one sort of allergy tip that we give to, um, you know, clients or friends or anyone who sort of comes to us that they're new to the allergy game. Um, so I was going to go ahead and start since I was super prepared. I was thinking through all the things like I've been through when I was number one. And in fact, I said it to a woman today. I said, you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> mistakes are going to happen. Things are going to happen. You may have to use your auto injector. Forgive yourself and move on. Um, you know, you're going to need help and whether you make them, I know I've made mistakes. My husband's made mistakes, family and friends have made mistakes that have all caused reactions. And the biggest thing I can tell you is, you know, forgive yourself, move on as long as you're okay. And, you know, everyone uses the EpiPen or auto injector, whichever kind you have, just move on with life. So that was, been, that was my number one sort of tip. Yep. I agree. Mm -hmm. That's Tip. I went first, so no one can steal it from me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Dee Dee, do you want to go since you're on a time crunch? Yeah. Um, then my number one tip is always, always, always have a spare change of clothes for your food allergy child. Mm -hmm. Um, because you just never know what is going to erupt from their bodies when they're having a, re a reaction. You know, in our house, it was always vomit. It was just always vomit and just always have something comfy that they can change into because you just, again, you know, just don't know what's gonna yeah and sometimes it's nice to keep something for you too i learned that on a plane yeah but... a is a good thing i had to um one time my daughter not an a, allergic reaction just um air sickness reaction mm -hmm. and she vomited all over me and all over herself and i did not have a change of clothes for her so the airline people were so nice. They let me keep an airline blanket. They gave me a blanket to wrap her up in. So I wrapped her up. She was about two. I wrapped her up in this blanket and I had to take my clothes off and put them in an air sickness bag. And my husband, he, fortunately, he had a t-shirt and undershirt on under his button down shirt. So he gave me his button down. So we get off the plane with a naked baby wrapped in a blanket and him and his like fruit of the loom white shirt and me <laughs> in a size man shirt. And <laughs> So embarrassing. So yes, absolutely. Having spare clothes for mom and child, really important, really important. Yeah. Bye. Who's next? Martha. Go, Martha. Martha, okay. Uh, oh gosh, um, I think my tip that I tell people now that I really wish I had known at the get-go was to have a counselor or a therapist like on your back pocket just ready there, because um, you never know when you're going to need them. I don't care how much you try not to put on your child or how much they don't want to like put on you. They need somebody outside the family to talk to about it um, and that kind of thing. So I really, we were going through things with my middle son already, so I already had a counselor when Kara had her moment. Um, so, you know, you can't always fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell people, just get a therapist. You know, it's just as important as your allergist and your doctors, it really is. So that's what I learned. Besides the, you know, vomit was always a problem for us too. So that's a really good one. I always forget about that because we've kind of moved past that a little bit. She can contain it pretty easy now because she's older, but yeah. So that's my tip. Good tip. I like that one a lot. Okay. Yeah, our mental health, the mom, and the mom burnout is real. Yeah, it is. So um, my tip, it's been usually across the board when anyone ever asks me, is always listen to your mommy voice. Um, you know, when my son was a baby, he cried a lot, and it had to do with the food allergies that we hadn't discovered yet. He always had gassy belly. He, you know, he would be pulling up his legs, trying to make his tummy feel better. He didn't sleep. He just cried. And, you know, the first reaction from so many people was, well, babies cry. It's normal. You're going to have to let them cry it out, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, to, I tried that. But then you get to a certain point where you just know this is different. This is not a fussy baby that just doesn't want to go to sleep. Something is really going on and really wrong. So, you know, don't question yourself. Um, you're allowed to be overprotective. You're allowed to overthink. It's your child. And you want to make the best of, you know, whatever they have going on. You're supposed to be there to comfort them. So, and that also goes opposite. I mean, if, if you, if, to, if it took you a while to figure that out, don't beat yourself up for not being more attentive because it's a learning curve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. That's a good I'm point. I can think of I, many people I, I like, oh, he's reacting. He's fine, and I was like, mm -hmm. no, that's a lot of hives. That's not heat. I was someone once told me we lived in Houston. They're like, oh, I think that's just heat rash. I was like, that's a pretty sudden heat rash. Like, no, I don't think that's heat rash. And then literally, you know, within a minute, he's, you know, he's like throwing up and everything, but. Um, I know often I've been accused of being overprotective and I was like, you have no idea. <laughs> Literally have no idea what this kid has been through. Let's. You have um, to be. It's, it's not just like a regular, oh, he fell down and scraped his knee. He's got to suck it up. No. <laughs> no. It's going to stop breathing. Hold on. Yeah. I can find it. It's no fun. The stopping breathing part. It's no fun. Dee Dee, what's your salad? Do you want to show us as we continue to chat? I have been eating this every single day. 
for this week because you all know me and that's what I do, right? I make a salad and I eat it all week long. <laughs> I didn't have to put anything in jars or anything. I just had to bring it all to Wyoming because it was already done. But um, this is a Waldorf salad and it is not from the Food Allergy Blogger. It's from Dr. Sears from Zone Perfect. That's, do you want some, Barbara? Do you want me to make one for you? Sure. Okay. I'm making two now. Um, so it's Dr. Sears and Waldorf salad. You can Google it and it'll pop right up online. And it's so yum, y'all, and so easy to make allergen-free. It calls for a yogurt-based dressing. So I just used a dairy-free yogurt. I like Kite Hill. We don't have that allergies in our house, but you can use whatever dairy-free if you've got a dairy allergy yogurt um, that you like. And then you cut up, you have chicken, and I buy, I know you can't do this, Martha, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> the pre-done chicken, but if you've got like leftover rotisserie chicken, it's a really good way to do your chicken. So you just throw in some chicken, and mine is already cooked, so it makes life really easy, which is fabulous because we like easy. And then you cut up apples, because it's a Waldorf salad, so you have to have apples, right? So I have here apples and cashews, because again, no nut allergy, um, and raisins. You can throw that on there. And if you have a nut allergy, tree nut allergy, and you can't do cashews, um, oh, and I just gave it all to you. I didn't give any to Barbara. I should fix that. Hemp um, hearts is a really good substitute. Mm -hmm. And like hearts are the mung, mung beans, dried mung beans, makes a nice little crunch too. Mm -hmm. That is, those are nice little substitutes for that. And then some onion to give it a little bit of kick. No onion for you? Okay, just a little onion for me. She doesn't like onion in her salad. She's hiding over there. She doesn't want to be on camera. She's very silly. And then a little celery. And so I just chop all this stuff up at the beginning of the week and then throw it on the salad. And it's amazing. And then this little curry sauce, which is curry and um, either parsley or cilantro, if, or not, if you don't like parsley or cilantro, this is parsley because I'm not a big cilantro person. Um, so just a little curry dressing, yogurt based, and that's it. So, you know, you get, it's really super easy to substitute and throw it together, make it at the beginning of the week, and then you can eat all week off of it. Fabulous. So that is my meal of the day, ladies. That's what I got. <laughs> it's it's delicious. It's so good. It's so good. And then I just, it takes that long to make lunch every day once everything's all chopped up. No time at all. And I put a little lemon juice in with the apples and shake it up so the apples don't turn brown. Mm -hmm. I have brown apples and that's kind of gross. I'm not. So excuse me for a moment. I'm going to walk this Barbara so oh, she can eat. You're going to come get it and say hello to everybody? No. Finally? Brad. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hello. She's one of my oldest friends. I've known her for 23 years. We she cannot see her. Wait, tell her. <laughs> She's just a body. There we go. Hi. 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 Hello. Yeah, about right after my youngest daughter was born. And Drake was two at the time? Uh, yes. Yeah. So a long time. Those kids were raised together like yeah. brothers and sisters and then she moved to utah and i moved to Cal colorado so both from florida so we're closer now we still see each other as much as we should but we're closer yeah. now life gets away she's back in school getting mm -hmm. her that's cool yeah, yeah. Awesome. awesome yeah we're excited okay so, who's next okay i'm gonna go over here now you can say <laughs> goodbye <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Who's oh cooking to do? See, I lured, I lured her in. She didn't even realize it. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job there, Tracy. It was awesome. So, does anyone care to start putting minutes? mine together? What? I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. That mess over here. Martha, are you cooking today or? I am cooking today, but it's like not cooking, so it's no heat involved. So I have to put like a layer together, which I kind of already did almost because I just wanted to make it. 
I'm having so much trouble with my internet. It looks horrible. So if I fade out on you all, it's nothing personal. Believe me. Um, I think everyone is. I blame virtual school and everyone working from home. It's disastrous. <laughs> yeah, they haven't even started virtual school year yet. It starts Tuesday for us. So it will get worse. And I'm balancing this on Hungry Harry's boxes that I just got an <laughs> order in yesterday. So <laughs> it's really high tech. So anyway, um, <laughs> I put together, um, so the base of it, you kind of put it in, you literally, there's no baking involved. You use like a bread pan, um, but it's coconut flour, 150 grams, honey or maple syrup, 85 grams. I use a scale so I can convert easier versus trying to do cups and that kind of thing. But 150 grams of coconut flour is about a cup. 55 grams of coconut oil softened. That's like the shortbread part. And then there's figs, dried figs, 180 grams of figs coconut milk, honey or maple syrup, and then some salt, like pink salt, if you want to put it in there, or regular salt, and you make like a caramel layer. So you let the base set, then you make your caramel, which I already did a little bit of it. I macerated some figs and some dates um, because I didn't have enough figs, so I figured it would work. So you kind of like make a caramel. Then I'll make a topping. Uh, she's using chocolate bar. Obviously, I can't because of the coconut or coke out, coke. Chocolate allergy. I can't talk. I'm blaming 3.30 in the morning, okay? <laughs> and um, then I'll heat that up, and you can use it in the microwave with coconut, uh, coconut oil if you have coconut. So it's a pretty good, easy, basic recipe. I was like, I can probably do this and still talk and maintain without too much of a deal. But I just mixed up the shortbread, actually, because I was like, oh, I'm worried if it'll come together very well. Um, okay. <laughs> We may kill each other, I'm not sure. Or I might hurt myself. Um, anyway, so it's just a basic cookie dough. Can't really see it that great there. But I went ahead and I put my um, pan in the freezer so it could get extra cold. Because obviously, if you're gonna want it to harden up quicker, it'll do that. So I'm gonna go grab that, put this in the pan, and then I'll start trying to make my caramel. Uh, but I'll probably mute myself because it will. I'm using my food processor and I still don't have a great setup here trying to we're probably gonna get a tablet next time. But anyway. Get you a so stand. Start, yeah, I was like, so, as she just needs to come and help me, my daughter does, but she, you know, she's staying away today. Till after the food's ready. Yeah. <laughs> so Tracy, did you wanna start while I go off camera? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so um, I made this this morning actually, cause then it would take too much time. Um, it's not something that I found from an allergy friendly blogger. It's actually a recipe I saw on TikTok that I wanted to redo allergy friendly. So um, basically, I guess it's, I don't know if even what it's called. It's a cake, but it's baked in a casserole dish. And you spoon it out, and it's not pretty, so bear with me. <laughs> but what it is, is you take, you mix um, pumpkin, I use coconut yogurt. Um, it called for four eggs. I used a powdered egg replacer instead. Sugar, pumpkin pie spice, and salt. And you mix it all together. And then you take your favorite cake mix. So I took Hungry Harry's um, yellow cake mix. You sprinkle it on top and you don't mix it in. And the original recipe called for walnuts, but I used hemp hearts instead. And then you just drizzle uh, the top of it with melted butter. And you just bake it. And it comes out as like this spoonable cake. But the fun yep. thing is, I'm going to try to put some on a plate. Hold on one second. And the deceiving thing about this is when it cooks, it's still kind of like wobbly when it comes out. Because I kept I cooked, it, I cooked it for like an hour because I was afraid it wasn't working. But it's actually, what it'll do is it'll set when you take it out and let it cool a little bit. And then the top gets like caramelized, like a hard kind of crunchy, buttery, sugary, I don't know. It's it's good. It's actually very good. So I'm going to actually put this together and pin it on my Pinterest page sometime this weekend. So you guys can try it too if you want. But it's, it's definitely, you know, it reminds me of like, I don't know, like maybe a cobbler sort of, but with pumpkin pie. Does that make sense? Ooh. That'll be fun in the fall to make. But it's super easy. <laughs> so. So I will give you guys, um, my secret recipe. <laughs> so I usually use King Arthur. Um, 
but we're still having some trouble getting, or I just use like a basic gluten-free cake mix, you know, sort of flour mix. I'm still having a lot of trouble finding sort of basic gluten-free flour mix stuff here in the Atlanta area. Um, I haven't been able to get King Arthur flowers or cake mixes. So I tried the Kroger brand, if we can all see that. Um, cake mix. I can only get chocolate right now. Interestingly enough, I can't get vanilla. Um, but what I kind of wanted to show is, so this is totally egg free and you can see how thick and fluffy it is. Um, I use applesauce with baking powder, but what I do is I also add vinegar and I mix it, like whisk it together until it's basically a science experiment, like bubbling. <laughs> and then I mix it with all the other ingredients. It's the last thing I mix. And then I pour it in the pan and I let it sit for 10 minutes. And if I don't let it sit for 10 minutes, if I'm rushing or forget or whatever, it comes out like a pancake. If I do let it sit for 10 minutes, it's light and fluffy. So that seems to be a big difference. Um, and I wish I could tell you, I use like, I use a t about a tablespoon of applesauce per egg and I have no measurement for how much baking soda I use. I literally just sprinkle it until like, it's covered. Um, at some point, this is the Italian heritage in me. I measure nothing. Uh, <laughs> I just, and then I also just pour the vinegar on it until it looks about right. Um, so one of my friends, when I was trying to explain to her how to do this, she's like, could you please measure? And so the one time I tried to measure, it came out weird. So I'm going to keep trying to figure out my measurements, but the other thing I'll do with the same recipe is I'll make cupcakes and I put the frosting in the middle and I make what we call whoopie pies. Um, and those are really fun to, I can put them in the freezer. They last, well, basically until my kid finds them and eats them. But they're fun to bring to birthday parties or other like kid events because then he doesn't feel like he has like a boring cupcake, even though it's essentially a cupcake turned inside out. It's kind of a more fun treat. Or if you make a bigger cupcake, you cut the tops off so you have two tops. Um, but it's, you know, all the same basic cake recipe, but it's just, it makes it a little more fun and, you know, feeling left, less left out of the big cake. But this is rewarding for everyone surviving first week of virtual school. <laughs> it looks delicious. It's a lot of sugar. I actually, none because sugar gives, chocolate and sugar gives me a migraine. Mm. I have Sparkling water and vodka. Cheers. I'll take the vodka. <laughs> Mom and dad survived too, sort of. <laughs> well, we had, this was our first week also, and um, it wasn't too bad. My daughter's very good at doing her own thing and, and staying on task like she's supposed to. I think what the most annoying thing was is our school system called us about 150 times and left voicemails about, well, we've, we've heard that we've had some complaints about the system not working, so just bear with us. And then it would be, well, we're still working on it. And I'm like, you know what, dude, stop calling me. I'm not going to answer the phone anymore. <laughs> I don't want any more voicemails. Just fix it. Just go on. <laughs> but had some pretty interesting um, stories from my daughter, though, about what some of the students were doing during their Zoom classes. Oh, geez. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, mine are littler. So, I mean, I, it was funny. My third grader, I'm basically, I'm sitting here in the kitchen and we set up a desk. We actually took out our kitchen table and <laughs> made it my husband's desk up in our guest room. It's, our house looks like insane people live here. And so I'm sitting in here trying to help him listen in because he has pretty severe ADHD and processing disorder. So the screen is really challenging for him. And, but like, I can hear the other kids telling stories about their day and talking about their parents. And I'm just, like, and what's going on? And the poor teacher is like, oh, that's really interesting, you know, little Johnny. But okay, we're going to mute you now. And I'm like, oh my God. And she only has like, I think 15 kids in the class. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty small public school classroom. And I'm like, oh my God, can you imagine the classes with like, you know, I think I saw in New York City, there's like 27 kids in a class. It's like the average class. And I was like, oh. You know, and then one kid starts and I have a dog. Do you do know I have a dog? And like, you know, uh, it's, it's really hard. I've noticed, and at least from like the moms I talk to, you know, on social media from like fifth grade on, it seems somewhat successful because at yeah. least, you know, 
Tak mau nak cancel tu. So JD, I didn't imagine it with younger kids. Sorry. That's okay. JD just wanted us to, to know that she didn't bag on us. Her hotel internet was crappy, so yeah. she got kicked out. But she said that she loved hanging out with us, so she didn't just fall I, off the PC there. <laughs> <laughs> How's your uh, caramelization going, Martha? My caramel went fine. It was weird because it's you're putting it in the food processor and just ran it through, and it was like two minutes. And I already put it in the refrigerator. Like I said, my setup's not great today. I can't really. I'm like I should have gone with the way I did before, but it wasn't working out either. I had no internet with it over there, which is like a foot. So whatever. Um, I'm melting. White chocolate. I probably can't see anything, but I'm melting white chocolate right now. And I use um, this is Cheddarfield, so it's like nut free and it's gluten free white chocolate. It does have uh, dairy and soy in it, so if you can't have those, we actually can have dairy and soy, which is surprising, but those are two of the major aids that we can actually have. <laughs> so um, we can't have that. So that's what we're doing. So I'm going to grab the Oh, it's coming together. It's just, you're literally layering it on top of each other. Just let it sit in the refrigerator and then cut it is the whole thing. So I just think it's interesting because you don't have to cook it. It just looks really good and easy. So I was like, I think I can do this and talk. So I'm going to go grab it. I can see her reflection in the microwave. Grab <laughs> Did you see me? I'm trying to avoid that part of the kitchen too. So it was like, there's the microwave. So that's the caramel or the fig topping with coconut. Mm -hmm. So just like caramelized, Very but cool. not real, real caramel, caramel. Cause it is technically her recipe is vegan. Of course I made it not vegan by putting a dairy the white it. chocolate on it, so. I was gonna make the margarita pie from Dee Dee's Our Cuisine book. Ooh. I couldn't get all the ingredients. <laughs> I've been trying for a week to get all the ingredients. So it's all right, because my family really likes that. And for the crust, we use the, um, they're called the s'morable, um, you know, allergy-free graham crackers. Oh yeah, I got those graham crackers because it's so hard to find some without cinnamon in it because that's when Akira is, plus she has the egg allergy too. and. So I was like, got some of those, and she was like, really liked them the other day. So I was like, yeah, see, and I got you graham crackers. So I'm hanging out with people and getting, everybody needs to learn new things, you know? Mm -hmm. We can all learn from each other. Ugh. Grabbing salt now. I have uh, children. Honestly, I'm sorry. I have children pushing their noses at the door, so I'm going to just sneak this cake outside. I will be right back. Chat away, ladies. Okay. Cool. I literally went with this recipe because I had everything in the cupboard. That is why I went with it. And um, also was it that book that both of us, me and you were in, um, the allergy table, Litwig, Lit I can't say her name, but she actually popped on last time. Okay. Uh, we had her, yeah, she, Lewis, I can't think of her first name to save my life. I'm sorry. And she said she was too tired to get on tonight because it's 10 o'clock there. Oh, you know, yeah. so I said, it's okay. <laughs> Um, later. <laughs> that's right. She said, is it going to be up later? And I was like, yes, I will have it at least on my YouTube channel. Plus we'll have it on everybody else's stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw this in the freezer real quick. Oh my. Okay. I think it's supposed to rain here tomorrow. So I'm not really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, it's been rainy here, which was nice actually. I, you know, to wake up to the sound of it mm -hmm. made me completely lazy all day. Just couldn't like wake up, or, but that's okay. You need days like that. You do. You do need days like that. I like the rain though. I just mm -hmm. hate thunder if it's too much. Like, yeah. and I think it's just because of the tornado alley here. It freaks me out. Yeah. Because so, I grew up in the mountains and then going here and then having tornadoes. And I've had, I think Adrian was four months old. My oldest son was four months old when I was in my first one. And yeah, ever since then, it kind of traumatized me. I really hate tornadoes. So, so if it starts to thunder too much, I really start to freak out. Completely <laughs> <laughs> <Really> understandable. <laughs> we had, um, was it not last week, the week before, I think, we had a, an earthquake. And I, I actually got up, and 
I mean, it wasn't major where I was, but I felt it. I got up, I was right. in the bathroom and all of a sudden, like, I, I heard something and I'm like, wow, is that a truck passing by? Like, is that, and then I felt the floor move and I heard things rattling. I was like, oh crap, was that just an earthquake? <laughs> then, you know, I'd get on Facebook and everybody's like, oh my God, it was an earthquake. So apparently we had an earthquake, but. Yeah, uh, I saw when you had that happen too, yeah. And we're on a major fault line here too, but we have I only know of one earthquake and it was about six years ago that we had. I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and I just was confused. I thought the rumbling sounded almost like a tornado and that's actually what got me up. And then I realized everything is shaking. So, you know, I did everything you're not supposed to do in a tornado, get up and run around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not a tornado, uh, earthquake, sorry. Years ago, we could have moved to California, we had the choice of Houston or LA and we ended up in Houston. And one of the deciding factors was, is I'm really afraid of earthquakes. <laughs> it wasn't the only deciding factor, but it was, it was definitely in there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if I could, I mean, like I said, it's, I don't think it's the norm for North Carolina. Um, and again, I'm thankful that I wasn't closer to, you know, where it actually originated because one of my friends was closer and they thought the house was coming down. They said it was that bad. So that would have wow. freaked me out for a while. <laughs> well, I'm going to wrap up our official call here um, and say thanks to everyone. We'll put this in comments. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, we'll put all our social media. Hi, uh, just got done we might doing my live meet and eat like we usually do. Um, and we ran a little short this shit this time. We were having trouble with the internet and everybody had some things going on. So I made this shortbread by the allergy table. So I didn't get to, you know, show the final product. So here it is. It's really, really good. Um, Kara is over here eating it. I'm not going to show her. I'll be nice. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.